Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we will discuss about one more topic in Automata theory that is an ambiguous grammar. So in the previous session, we have discussed about the context-free grammar and then the parse tree or a derivation tree. So if we consider any string, the string can be derived from the production rules either by leftmost derivation or the rightmost derivation. And from that derivation, we can construct the derivation tree or a parse tree. And this parse tree is used to compare in the uh, compiler construction, right? It will be used in the compiler construction. And this ambiguous grammar means if the string can be constructed by using more than one leftmost derivations or more than one rightmost derivations, then such type of grammar is known as ambiguous grammar. So if you consider any string, so that should be constructed or derived from only one leftmost uh, subtree or leftmost derivation or one more rightmost derivation. If the same string is derived from more than one leftmost derivation or more than one rightmost derivation or that particular string consists of more than one subtree, then we can say it as an ambiguous. So, so if it is more than one leftmost, more than one leftmost parse tree or a derivation tree. We can call anything, right? Parse tree or a derivation tree. So if you say that more than one leftmost parse tree, so this leftmost parse tree can be done from the leftmost derivation itself, right? So, or more than one rightmost parse tree, right? So if any grammar, if any grammar is having more than one leftmost parse tree or more than one rightmost parse tree or more than one parse tree. So it, it can be anything, either left or right, more than one parse tree. Parse tree. So then we can say that grammar is in ambiguous, right? So the main problem with this ambiguous grammar is, so the main application of this grammar is in the compiler construction. And if the grammar is having ambiguity then it is not suitable for compiler construction right so the compiler will be evaluated only one expression so if the same grammar derives two or more expressions then it is somewhat difficult for the compiler to choose the correct one so that's why if it is an ambiguous grammar that is not suitable for the compiler construction right so consider let us take an example so that you can understand more so example, let us take this one S tends to A, B, A and A tends to A, A or epsilon and B tends to B, B or epsilon and the string. So we need to derive a string, a small string, we will take a small string A, A. So we need to derive the string A, A from these production rules. So let us start with the leftmost, I will go with the leftmost. So let us start with yes. So yes can be substituted with A, B and A. So what is the leftmost among these non-terminals? So because in the leftmost derivation, first we need to substitute the terminals on the leftmost uh, non-terminal. So here the leftmost non-terminal is this one and this can be replaced with A because the string should be starts with A. So I will replace A, A and B, A. Right? Again, among these three non-terminals, what is the leftmost? So this one. Again, I will substitute A, 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 B, A. Right? Now, you can observe the string is A, A and here we got A, A. Now, simply, what is the leftmost? This one. So, apply the epsilon here because A is also having the production with epsilon. So, A, A, epsilon, B, A. So, which is nothing but A, A, B, A. So, among these two, what is the leftmost terminal? This one. So, again, use epsilon a a epsilon a which gives a a a again apply the epsilon on the leftmost because this is the only non-terminal so we can directly apply here a a epsilon 
which is nothing but a and a so this is the resultant string so this is resultant string is derived by using the leftmost derivation by using less leftmost derivation see now i will consider one more this one leftmost here also i will go with the leftmost so yes can i will replace with a b and a now see what is the leftmost a so previously we have substituted a with a small a and capital a so this production now i will replace this a with the epsilon so epsilon b a which is nothing but b a right among these two what is the next one uh, leftmost leftmost is b again here also i will apply epsilon epsilon a which is nothing but a so i will substitute a a with small a capital a and again i will substitute here a a a and now i will substitute the epsilon so a a epsilon which is nothing but a and a so here you can observe here so in this derivation also we got this thing from the leftmost derivation so in this both the cases we are applying the leftmost derivation so leftmost non terminally substituted first here also that's the same thing so in a b a first a is substituted with epsilon then b and b is substituted with epsilon and only one uh, non terminal is there so directly we are substituting and again we are substituting the same so here in this grammar in this grammar right in this grammar so we are deriving the same string with more than one leftmost derivations right we are deriving the same string a a by using more than one leftmost derivations so this grammar is this grammar is ambiguous right this grammar is ambiguous which is not suitable for compiler construction so we need to remove this ambiguity and there is no proper method to remove the ambiguity so we have to rewrite the grammar so that we'll see in the further sessions right so ambiguous ambiguous grammar so if any string is derived with more than one leftmost derivations so by using this derivation we can simply draw the sub tree uh, derivation tree or a parse tree right so here we are having two parse trees for leftmost derivation so that's why we can say this grammar is ambiguous so we'll go with the one more example and we'll close so let us take one more example see uh, e tends to e plus e e tends to e star e and e tends to id and the string and the string is id plus id star id so this is a string we need to derive so i will go with the rightmost now i will go with the rightmost derivation so first i will start with the e so you can consider e plus e e plus e so what's the rightmost here so rightmost is this one so this can be substituted with e plus e star e right now rightmost so this is given as id so e plus e star id now this is the rightmost so e plus id into id so now this is id plus id star id so this is the required string this is the required string so this string is derived by using the rightmost derivation rightmost derivation now we will go with the one more thing rightmost so consider e now i will substitute instead of i plus i e, e plus e and go with e star e so e star e so coming to the rightmost derivation according to the given string so first i will substitute this with id so e star id now only one variable is there now i will go with this one so e plus e star id now this is the rightmost right so e plus id into id now this one so id plus id into id so this is a required string so in this case also we are deriving the string by using more than one rightmost so you can also derive the same string with more than one left leftmost derivation right you just practice that one so if any grammar so this is 
this grammar is a ambiguous because this grammar is having a more than one rightmost derivation that means more than one rightmost parse trees right so this is ambiguous this is ambiguous right so hope you understood this one if any grammar if you take if you consider any grammar and you just give the string and if that same string is derived with more than one left to the most derivation or rightmost derivation then we can simply call it as an ambiguous grammar uh, let's stop here and uh, if you are having any doubts regarding this ambiguous grammar feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much